Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 4401 West Broadway. We have ample parking around the building as well as a parking lot that's located adjacent to the building. Our regular order of service is Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we have Bible study. Afterwards at 11 a.m. we have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. on Sundays we have our Sunday evening worship. We do have midweek Bible study Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and we have classes for all ages. At the Western Church of Christ we also offer a radio program called More Bible Talk. It is broadcasted from WLLV, that's 1240 AM on the radio dial, and 101.9 on the FM dial. The dates and times of the classes are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. We also have a website. It is www.westncoc.com. On this website, you can retrieve lessons brought from the pulpit. Thank you very much. If you'd like to mark your song up to page 639, that would be the song of invitation immediately after the lesson. That was 639, the song immediately after the lesson. Now, if you would, let us turn to page 527. And if it is comfortable for you, please stand. That's page 527.
today is the first day of the rest of our lives. Amen. And we must understand that there are so many things in this life that we cannot change. Amen. But come to the reality that we must accept them. Today is a day that some people may consider a gamble, but it is actually a choice. A choice that some will make and have made the wrong choice. <clears throat> and one must remember, when making wrong choices, that all could be lost. The time that Adam and Eve had in the garden, it was a lie. God placed them there for a reason. Amen. What was that reason, you may ask? The Bible tells us to tend to the garden. They made <coughs> wrong choices, mm -hmm. and they were put out of the garden. Mm -hmm. If we make the right choices, we will be able to live and to appreciate them, Man. and consider that all is won when we do what is right. We come out on top. Yesterday, how many of you would wish that you could go back and change yesterday? How many of you wish that this day was over and that you would be in tomorrow? We're right where we need to be. Amen. We're right where God wants us to be. All we can take is one day at a time. Amen. Live according to what God has given us. The ability that we have, that we focus on Him and the goal, and we can get there. Yesterday, many of us would say that my life was lost. Mm. But today, we're victorious. We were allowed to awaken this morning Man. to have the activity of our limbs and to be in our right mind. To be able to come to this place to worship God in spirit and in truth. Man. But yesterday, we're going to keep looking at yesterday. Why? In so many cases, yesterday is important. It's important that we remember some things from yesterday in order that we may live today. And that if so be it, tomorrow we will still be able to focus on yesterday. And that is today. Mm -hmm. And to give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Man. I heard a man say a few days ago, come by to see me tomorrow. And tomorrow when you come, come back tomorrow. <laughs> and then when tomorrow comes, you come back tomorrow. And his point was this, that tomorrow never comes. Tomorrow is what? Today. Mm -hmm. The scripture that was read in Philippians 4, verse 8 through 10, we read once again. 
Finally. I mean, so many people right now be like, whew, finally he's done. <laughs> the one told me this morning, you know, you was a little long-winded. <laughs> and I, I take all that in, you know, like a sponge. And I'm thinking there are some people over here right now wishing that they could be somewhere else, but you're right here. Lock the door and we have a captive on. <laughs> you know, just that teacher, don't lock the door to keep people in, but lock them to keep people out and let them in. But the Bible is clear, and as Paul writes to the church of Philippi here, and he says, finally, brother, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Man. That, that may not be happening today. But yesterday, if you can think about those things, the things that happened yesterday, a week ago, months ago, or years ago, you can think about those things and bring it all into today. Mm. Yesterday. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And the God of peace will be with you. Now I want you to think about that just for a moment. How much practice or how much learning can you do in one day? The things that you learned on yesterday, you put into practice today. Hmm. In order that you may benefit, not necessarily on tomorrow, but on the days and years to come, and hopefully in heaven. Man. Think about it. As Paul again, we read again. Finally. You know, he's coming to the end of his letter here. But even with him saying finally, and he said those three words there, he continued on. You know, a lot of times when we write letters to people and we get down to the end and we have signed our name, and then we put PS. You've thought of something else that you want to say, and you don't want to rewrite that letter, so you continue down at the bottom, and, and some of you do not understand the importance of, you should have thought about all those things here. Now you wrote another letter. <laughs> Paul was not actually, and in, in, said finally here at the close of his letter, but he was getting close to the close of it. We only have one letter to the Philippians here, to the church of Philippi. In other cases, in Corinthians, he had two letters. Thessalonians, he had two letters. And we look at those things and we understand Paul writing the way he wrote to the individuals because some needed more encouragement than others. But in this letter here, four chapters, again, man put those chapter breaks in there, but he said, I'm and if you open up a letter from somebody and it had chapter one, what would you think? <laughs> so so let's, let's not think that, you know, he had these chapter breaks here. It was just one continuous letter. But he said, I don't know what. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. We, as the church of Philippi, we need to think of the things that are right and pleasing before God. Man, man. Yesterday. Yesterday, we, we can understand as we look at God's word that we learn from his word. What he, he wanted to get across the people the way he wanted them to live, the way he wanted them to act, the way he wanted them to worship him. God has given us these things. The word that we have, it is not 
the same word that they had, but yet it is the same word. But we just have more of it. Now, they were privy to some of the things that was happening, but they were not privy to other things that would happen. But he says this, to those that in the Christian dispensation, so Romans 15, verse 4, for whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scripture, we might have hope. Amen. Yesterday. Amen. Remember <clears throat> the days of yesterday. See, we can go back and we can think about, you know, people telling us, remember your childhood? Remember how, you know, we used to do these things, how you used to run and play and, and didn't have a care in the world? We remember those things. It, it is a good thing to remember. You know, a good you know, reminder to hold on to those memories and, and think about how you used to run and jump and, and some of us wish we could today. But all we have is a memory. And hold on to it because that may be what is going to get you through today. Amen. Yesterday's memories. But what Paul is saying here. In reference to the things that were written in former days for our instruction. That if we look at what allowed the children of Israel to be successful, we can be as well. But what the children of, of Israel allowed them to, to you know, feel the, the wrath of God. If we don't read those things and, and, and get something out of those things, we're going to feel the wrath of God as well. Amen. It was written by our instruction that, that through endurance and, and through the encouragement of the scriptures that we might have hope. God, remember, God saved a remnant of the children of Israel. We too can be saved Amen. if we would just put him first. So the word that was given to them yesterday are the words that we practice today. Knowing how to live, knowing for whom we're living for, I was gone. Amen. Putting him first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things will be added unto you. See, see, we, we just soak his word in. And, and we, we, we practice what we have learned because one day, it's all going to be over. Mm. So who do we learn from? You know, we, we, again, we learn from the scriptures, but we also learn from the faithful. What, what has been taught by some other person that, that has done what God wanted them to do. We learn from them. Who, who taught you the gospel? When did they teach you the gospel? When did you become obedient unto the gospel? Paul, as he writes to Timothy. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 1 and 2, he says, You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Amen. When did Paul teach Timothy? Now, now Paul, I mean, you know, Timothy has written his letter. This is the second letter that, that Paul has written to Timothy. When did he teach him? He taught him yesterday. Mm -hmm. He taught him yesterday. And, and what Timothy is doing, Timothy is reading his letter today. <laughs> so he's remembering yesterday. What a faithful individual told him, and he's telling him that these things in which I taught you in the presence of many witnesses entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So is yesterday important? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's very important. And, and we need to understand what we need to be doing today because of what was taught to us on yesterday. 
It can't be any plainer. <laughs> no, we, we, we don't want to go back and live yesterday, but we want to hold on to what we have learned from yesterday and put it into practice on today. Yeah. We also learn from family. Now, family have let many of us down, but yet it has lifted many of us up. We, we have learned from their mistakes. We have learned from their successes. But the thing that we need to, to really focus on is what Paul tells Timothy as far as the word. The things in which he has learned yesterday. 2 Timothy 3, verse 14. 2 Timothy 3, verse 14. Again, he's writing him this letter. He has taught him, but he's telling him to remember a little further back mm. on yesterday. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for, for, for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Now, examine that if you would. What did, did Timothy learn? He learned the word. Who did he learn it from? Faithful individuals. What were they? They were his family. Mm -hmm. That from a child, from a child now, he, he learned these things. And that the things in which he learned, he had put those things, or he put those things into practice so that he may be pleasing unto God. Amen. He said they will make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Timothy's mother and grandmother taught him the word. Mm -hmm. And I believe there are many mothers and grandmothers and fathers and grandfathers that are teaching their children the word. And they need to take heed. The, the, the children need to take heed to what is being said. There are times where children venture off into the wrong direction. And we try to steer them back to this side because we don't want them to make the same mistakes that we're making. We want them to have a better life than what we have had. So we continue to teach them God's word and we want them to know the importance of yesterday. You know, we, we, we teach them history. We, we want them to know what happened long ago. As far as family is concerned, as far as race is concerned, as far as nations are concerned. But what we need to be teaching them is God's word. What happened on yesterday in God's word. So they may understand what they need to do today so that God may be pleased with them. So that they may live a future, have a salvation in the future and be in heaven. And that's what all of this is pointing to is heaven. How, how can you say yesterday is pointing to heaven? That's what we just read. Paul telling Timothy, you remember those things. You, you also teach others those things. You, you do what is right. Remember yesterday. A lot of people, when they say, you remember yesterday? And what they're saying is, you remember when you messed up on yesterday? Mm -hmm. Did you expect me to put some trust in you today? <coughs> Paul just said, I didn't do anything wrong by teaching you the word of God. And I want you to remember those things that I taught you that you may be able to teach others. <clears throat> but I want you to understand something. Yesterday does not control today. Amen. It does not. I remember when you were this. I remember when you were that. The word is was. <laughs> That's what we have to remember. Yesterday I was, but today I am. Amen. Why am I? Because of the great I am. 
Amen. Yesterday. Again, yeah, we learn from it, but we don't live for yesterday. We live for today. Amen. Yesterday does not control today. Amen. One of the greatest examples that, that, that we can find that as we look at the scriptures is it, one here. The expectations of God. We ourselves need to have expectations. We, we need to do the things that's right because, again, our God has expectations of us. He tells us what we need to do, why we need to do it. Now, all we have to do is accept it. You know, people tell us, and, and Brother Mark, uh, and many times, that, that he's been on the radio program with me, you know, talking about these things, trying to get these things across to people, that we are not born sinners. God made us upright. And he teaches us something here as we look at his word in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse, let's start with verse 19. Verse 19. Yet you say, well, why should not the son suffer for the iniquity of the father? When the son has done what is just and right and has been careful to observe all my statutes, he shall surely live. Again, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. Verse 20. The soul, here it is now, the soul who sinned will die. The son shall not suffer the iniquity of the father, nor the father suffer the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. But if a wicked person turns away from his sins that he has committed and keeps my statutes and does what is just and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Say, what did you do yesterday? Or are you willing to correct it today? Or are you willing to, to, you know, repent of your sin? Commit your ways to the Lord? Verse 22 says, None of the transgressions that he has committed shall be remembered against him. For the righteousness that he has done, he shall live. And have I any pleasure in death of the wicked? Declares the Lord God. And not rather that he should turn from his way and live. But when a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice and does the same as an uh, abominations that the wicked person does, shall he live? None of the righteous deeds that he has done shall be remembered. But the treachery of which he is guilty and the sin he has committed, for them he shall die. Mm. Yet, you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now. O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. So it's this, this man that has turned away from God and done wrong. That's why death is about us. Yeah. That's why we are separated away from God. Because of sin. Not because we were born sinners. We were not. Man has turned away from God. Man. In verse 27 again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life. Because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? In verse 30, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn from your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away. From you all the transgressions that you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God. So turn and live. 
What are they turning from? What, what is God trying to encourage them to turn from? Yesterday. The sins in which they have committed, the iniquities, the wickedness that they have done before him, those false gods that they have served, he's telling them, you turn away from them. The ways of yesterday and live for today. Can we not learn from their failure? Can we not learn from their successes? This, this is the expectation that Bell has for his people. That man may turn away from sin and turn to him. Oh, are we willing to do that today? Leave yesterday, live for today. Amen. You know, there's no future for some people you will hear. Mm. No hope for them. Yeah, we have a future. We have a hope. God has plans for our lives, Amen. for our souls. He has plans. And many of us don't appreciate it. There's a home prepared. What we need to do is we need to prepare ourselves to get to that home. Amen. You know, people say you pass by a, a empty house. That's all it is, is an empty house. It's an empty house until someone moves in it, and then it becomes a home. What we have right now, this body, we're going to give it up. It's going to go back to the dust of the ground. Amen. This, 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 this world is not our home. Amen. It's heaven. <clears throat> That's where, you know, we, we're, we're, we're waiting, we're looking forward to residing in heaven. And we can get there if we would only do what's right. Mm -hmm. Paul, Paul was not the, the best of people as he was Saul. He was the best Saul that he could be in his eyes. In the eyes of the Jerusalem council, he was the best that he could be, that, that he was. He, he was brave in what he was doing. Hey, you give me this letter. Let me go. To, to Damascus. Let me go and we let, let us drag them out of their homes, those that are committed to the way. Give me this letter and allow me to go to, to cast them into prison. And they gave it to him. Paul thought he was doing what was right. He, he, he was not the best of people in the eyes of God. That's right. If so, Jesus wouldn't have said, why persecutest thou me? You know, would, would you would you Tell someone that when they beat you up every day, you, you're the best person I know. <laughs> no. No, you, you, you hate to see that person. But Jesus, as he met Paul on the road to Damascus, Jesus came, became the, the friend of Paul because Paul Listen to him, and he did what was right. So we find in 1 Timothy 1, 1 Timothy 1, verse 13 through 16. We'll start with verse 12. 1 Timothy 1, verse 13 through 16. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful. Appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflows for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. But I receive mercy. For this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. You know what Paul did not forget? Paul did not forget yesterday. 
he did not forget what he had done. The things in which he had done, he remembered those things on a daily basis. He remembered them because of that thorn that he had in the flesh. That, that he may keep his body in subjection unto the will of God. That, that he may keep his mind in a way that God would have it to be so that he could make the statement that he made throughout his writings to the Christians that he wrote to. He remembered yesterday. Do we remember <coughs> where we came from? Do we remember the troubles that we have had? Do we remember how far away from God we were? And do we know where we are today? Do we know? Evil versus good. If the, if the evil outweighs the good, we're going to have some problems. Amen. Remember the words of Jesus in Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So the, 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 the good must outweigh the evil. You, you could do ten things wrong and one thing right. That one thing that you have done right may, may carry much more weight than those things that you have done wrong. You don't have to be six and six or, or six and seven. It, it, can be, it can be five, you know, weighing us down. And we can do one thing to allow us to be lifted up. And that's to be obedient unto God. Putting all those other things aside. And understand the importance of serving him. Intention versus action. A lot of times we intend to do things because of, of what we've said on yesterday. We get to today and, and we, we forget about those things. Uh, Y'all heard me say it and you've heard others say it as well. I'm going to say it one more time. That man that laid flat on his back in a hospital, in, in a bed, and he says, God, Lord, if you ever let me get out of this bed, I'm going to serve you. Where is he? Where is he? he he's not just serving the world. He's doing what he wants to do. He don't remember. I don't remember saying that. Mm. You don't. <laughs> These little things right here come in handy, don't they? <laughs> Brother, I, I just want to I just want you to hear yourself. I, I you know, I thought maybe it was the last time I was gonna talk to you, so I recorded you. <laughs> you you go to your dying bed. And here's your plea. Lord, if you ever let me get out of this bed, I'm gonna serve you. That's not my voice. <laughs> well, whose voice is it? It's you. Listen to these words here in Acts chapter 24, verse 25. 24, after some days Felix came with his wife Priscilla, who was a Jewish, and he sent for Paul and heard him speak about faith in Christ Jesus. Acts 24, 25, and he reasoned about righteousness and self-control and the coming judgment. Felix was alarmed and said, Go away for this present. And when I get an opportunity, I will summon you. Can, can you just imagine? And, and we, we ran into this ourselves. I don't have time today. Come back tomorrow. And you know how pesky salesmen are, right? You tell them to come back tomorrow. You know what they're going to do? They're going to come back tomorrow. You get that phone call. I, I don't have time right now. Could you call me back tomorrow and at 6 a.m. in the morning? They're burning your phone up, wanting you to answer it. And I, I'm so glad now they got that maybe spam on there. <laughs> and maybe I'm just not going to answer it. But the gospel calls. It goes out. And there are people that do not want to accept it. Again, Felix, when I get an opportunity, I will summon you. Can you imagine? You remember what you said on yesterday? I, I, I don't want to hear anything else you have to say, but I, I did not say, you come back and I, I want to talk to you. Well, you, you are a man in charge here. You, you have some type of authority. You're trying to tell me when you have an opportunity. You make out your own calendar. We need to understand the importance of yesterday. Today, 
If you're not a child of God, you need to think about yesterday. Those near misses that you've had. Those times where you thought that your life was going to end. Those, those, those opportunities that, that you watched somebody die and you, you have known that they were living a sin, you know, sinful life and that they have no opportunity to be able to hear and enter in my good and faithful servant because of the things that they did yesterday. You think about the opportunities that you have today. Amen. And you get your life right and you do what's right. You be an example to them that they may understand that yesterday you were lost, but today you're found. You were blind, but now you see. Amen. Why? It's because of the grace that God has extended to each one of us, the mercy that He has on each one of us. Today is all we have. But the memories, the thoughts of yesterday, they're there and they need to be there to keep us in remembrance of the things that we need to do and the things that we do not need to do. If you're here and you're not a child of God and you want to become one, that opportunity is yours. To come and to make the confession that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Be immersed in the watery grave of baptism, rising to walk in newness of life. Newness of life. Not yesterday, but today. If you're here and you're straight away, we're asking you to come back to the fold before it is too late. Yeah. If you're here and you're subject, we ask you to please come as we stand and sing. Don't take your hand. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
and glory. He will give me grace and glory and go with me, with me all the way. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I Go with him, with him.